All right, guys, so let's jump into the basics panel and discuss the different adjustments and tools that we have here. So starting with the treatment, we talked about previously that we can switch from color and black and white by hitting the V key, going in back and forth. You can also do it by just clicking on black and white or clicking on color. So it's the exact same thing. It's just going to switch our image to black and white. We're going to lose some of the options when we're in black and white because we no longer have vibrance and saturation to worry about because we're dealing with a black and white image. So when you switch back to color, you'll see those being enabled again. All right, the next one I want to go over is this white balance selector or this little eyedrop tool. Now basically how this works is I can click this button for the white balance selector or hit W, the hotkey, and I'm going to drag this over an area in my image that has a neutral color, typically like a, a white. Now the collar on his shirt should be white, so if I click that, Lightroom's going to make a guesstimate as to what the color in this image, what the white balance should be in this image. Now if that actual object is true white, then it typically will guess right. But oftentimes that white that you're clicking on may not be a complete white. It may be a different shade of white, uh, you know, like an ivory or something like that. Um, or it could be a blown white. So there could be no detail left there, in which case it won't work as well. But we can also click on other areas of the picture, other neutral colors, and it's also going to make another guesstimate based on that neutral color. So if I click on this dark gray area of his jacket, it makes another guess and it actually gets really close to where I want it. So use the white balance tool. It's a I would say it's a great tool for when an image is just, you know, really far off from where it needs to be. Start with the white balance selector uh, and then pick a neutral area and it'll kind of get you in a range. And then what you want to do is come over to the temperature and tint and work it, uh, kind of make your micro adjustments from there. Two other quick options I want to show you guys with the white balance selector tool is if I click the white balance selector tool, you'll notice that in the bottom left on the toolbar, it brings up the white balance options right here. Number one is auto dismiss. If I have this checked, basically once I click, it's going to automatically dismiss my white balance tool. But if I don't have this checked, I can keep clicking on different areas of the image until I find uh, a spot that gives me a good tone. And so until I find like right here and I go, okay, now I'm good. I'm going to hit W again to dismiss the tool. I'm going to hit W again to bring back up that bar and I'm going to click on auto dismiss again. The next option I have is this show loop, which I can disable if I want to. It's this little box that hovers along with my uh, eyedropper tool that says pick a target neutral and it shows me basically the the tone that my eyedropper is over it's a really useful tool I can adjust the scale of it by just sliding this up or down uh, sliding it up is going to show me more of the image uh, than sliding it down so it's typically more useful having it all the way down because it's going to show you exactly which point you're over and then if I want to disable it at any point in time I can just uncheck this and then when I drag over it doesn't show me that loop view with my eyedropper tool so I'm going to re-enable that and then let's un, uh, let's click W again to release our white balance selector, and let's go to the next tool. Now the next white balance tool I want to go over is this little drop down right here, which is going to show me some white balance presets. Now as shot is going to be basically what this image was in camera. So in camera, this is what the white balance was. If I switch it down to the next option, it's going to be uh, this kind of automated preset where Lightroom is going to guess what the white balance should be. Now for this image, it actually did a pretty good job of guessing. I like the look of it, but oftentimes it guesses wrong, which makes it not a very reliable tool. The next options we have are basically very similar to what you'd see in your camera. You have uh, settings for daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten. and these are all just pre-dialed temperatures for these different scenes. Uh, the next option I have is this custom, which basically anytime we make an adjustment with the uh, white balance selector or by just dragging the temperature up or down, it's going to automatically switch me to custom because I am choosing my own temperature. All right, so right below that we have the temperature tool. Dragging to the left is going to make my images more cool, and going to the right is going to make it more warm. So typically when you hear cool versus warm, you're talking about blues versus uh, yellows. So a cooler image is going to be more blue, a uh, warmer image is going to be more yellow. Right below that I have my tint. Dragging to the left is going to increase the amount of greens in my image, while dragging to the right is going to increase the amount of magentas, or pinks. So basically if I notice that skin tones aren't quite right, like if I cool this down too much, and I start noticing that, hey, there's too much pink in the skin tone now, I can drag my tint to the left and it'll increase the amount of greens in the skin tone so it doesn't reveal so much pink. So it's a nice micro adjustment to really get those skin tones right on. All right, so next we have our tone adjustments. Now if I click on auto, it's going to do the same thing as auto did up here in the white balance, except it's going to make a guesstimate based on what the tone setting should be. So I'll do that by just clicking auto and you can see that it tried to guess kind of where it should be. It doesn't really get it anywhere near where I want it. So again, this is one of those tools that I don't typically use. I'm going to hit undo. 
The next slider we have is the exposure slider. Dragging to the left is going to reduce the exposure of my image, darkening it up to four stops. And dragging to the right is going to increase the brightness of the exposure by up to four stops. The nice thing about exposure is if I want it to be one full stop or two full stops brighter, all I need to do is go to the number adjustment and hit one for one stop brighter. I'm going to double click to undo that and I'm going to go into recovery. The next slider we have is the recovery slider, which basically attempts to pull our highlights down. So if I have an image that has a lot of really bright highlights, using recovery is going to help because it's going to reduce those bright highlights and bring it back into the mid-tone range a little bit. Now obviously if an area is completely blown, you're not going to be able to recover too much of it. And you need to have some level of detail there to be able to recover it. But recovery works really, really well in, in balancing out the overall tone of the image. And you can see how the highlights in the sky when it are so bright at zero, but when I bring this recovery up to 100, it's going to darken it quite a bit. Now one thing to know about recovery is that if you have it too high, like between 80 and 100, it can create some unnatural color gradation when you have images that have a lot of harsh lighting in it. Like for example, if you have a portrait that has some harsh flash lighting or harsh sunlight uh, on the skin, it can create unnatural gradation there. And also, it's going to reduce the amount of contrast. The overall contrast in the image is going to be dropped because you're, you're pulling down a lot of those highlights, which are helping create some of that contrast. So you'll notice that at zero, we have a much more bright and contrasty image than at 100. So typically, when you're taking recovery up, you do want to make contrast adjustments as well to kind of balance it out. The next slider we have is fill light, which works the exact opposite way of recovery. If recovery is pulling back and bringing back the detail in our highlights, well, fill light is increasing the detail in our shadows. And so basically it's trying to increase the shadowy areas while leaving the highlights intact. So when I pull fill light up in this image, we're going to see more and more of this grill up in front of the car where there's like deep and dark shadows being recovered. And we see more and more detail in the grill. Now, in previous versions of Lightroom, fill light created m far too much noise to make it a really useful tool. But in Lightroom 3 and beyond, uh, they, they've actually done a really good job with making it uh, very powerful and it doesn't add nearly as much noise as it did in previous versions of Lightroom. So it's actually a really nice tool in, in kind of balancing uh, between recovery, between saving your highlights as well as kind of saving the detail in your shadows. Our next slider adjustment is the blacks and basically blacks start from zero and it goes all the way up to 100 and all it's going to do is increase the total amount of blacks in the image. So it's going to affect the shadowy areas first and kind of move up through the tonal range as I increase my blacks. And you can kind of see that as I increase. I'm going to turn on my clipping, my, uh, my clipping view so you guys can actually see what's clipping. As I increase the blacks, you'll see more and more of the detail in the shadow areas is being gone, is being removed. Okay, so let's bring that back down to zero. I'm going to turn back off my clipping view. Actually, I'm going to double click this to default it back to 5. Alright, so our next slider is brightness. And you're probably asking now, what's the difference between brightness and exposure? Because they both affect the overall luminosity of the image. So, But brightness works a little bit differently. We're going to get into the details of it in the next video. We're going to compare exposure and brightness directly. But for now, just know that they work slightly differently. Um, with brightness, we're limited on the positive side as well as the negative side to plus 150 and minus 150, which is equivalent to two stops of exposure on the plus and minus side. So we can't go above two stops. So uh, plus 75 is one stop worth of brightness. I know it's kind of an arbitrary number, but it's plus 75 is one stop, uh, equivalent to one stop of exposure. So. The next item we have is contrast, which is pretty obvious. It's just going to increase the overall contrast in the image up to 100. And we can also reduce the overall contrast image up to negative 50 as well. So if we pull in a JPEG image that maybe has too much contrast, we can actually reduce some of the contrast out of it to a certain extent. All right, so moving on to the present sliders, we have clarity, vibrance, and saturations. These are all options. These are all adjustments that are going to make our images really pop. And starting with clarity, the clarity slider basically works by increasing mid-tone contrast. Now what that means is if I increase clarity, it's going to kind of increase overall detail in the image. If I decrease it, it's going to decrease and kind of soften that overall detail. It kind of adds depth and dimension the higher up I go, and it decreases it the lower I go which makes decreasing it really useful for, say, softening skin, while increasing it is really useful for pulling out detail in objects. It's kind of a very subtle enhancement. The one thing to be aware of with clarity is if you pull it too high, you're going to get this like little black blooming effect around uh, bright areas, bright objects. And you might not see it as much in this image, but if I were to, say, create another, I'm just going to 
create an adjustment brush that's just for clarity and we're going to boost clarity all the way up to 100 again and draw it over this area so you can kind of see what it's doing. It's going to increase this black little rim effect around these objects that have highlights around them. Uh, and, and so we want to be kind of careful not to take our clarity up too high. It can actually get too high and you'll be able to notice those items. And you'll see it more as we go through Lightroom. We'll be really kind of careful to avoid adjusting clarity too high to make sure we don't have that black halo effect. On the other side, pulling it down too far is going to create a softening halo effect. So if you have objects that are backlit, pulling clarity down is going to make that backlight really create kind of this halo effect around those objects. All right, so moving on to Vibrance. Vibrance basically is a saturation type slider, but it works by, it's a very subtle slider, and what it tries to do is affect anything that's not a skin tone more than skin tones. So basically what it's trying to do is keep your skin tones intact while making the image more poppy, adjusting uh, the saturation of the other colors. So if I pull it up, you're gonna see my blues get quite a bit more blue, but for the most part, my skin tones are, t are staying relatively intact. It's still gonna affect them a little bit, but they're, they're more intact than if I were to pull saturation up by plus 35. Now dropping vibrance down to zero isn't going to completely remove all of the color from my image. From this one it looks like it has, but there's actually still a little bit of color in there. It's just reducing most of the color. Whereas with saturation, if I do the same thing, it'll actually pull all the color from my image. So we're going to use vibrance to create nice popping effects, and we're going to also use it on the other side to create nice vintage effects. All right, guys, so the last slider in the basic panel I wanted to go over is the saturation slider. And if vibrance is kind of our little subtle, uh, you know, saturation boost that doesn't affect skin tones as much, saturation is kind of the big brother, the obnoxious big brother that affects every single color in the image equally. And so pulling it up is going to make all the colors increase. doesn't matter if it's skin tones or whatever. Every color is going to increase in saturation, which means that you want to be not too heavy-handed with saturation because it can really make images look overly candied and kind of fake. So be careful with saturation taking up too high. Typically I don't go above uh, 15 to 20 in my images. And if I want to pull a color out, you can pull it out as much as you want, going all the way to negative 100, which is equivalent to a full black and white image. All right guys, so I'm going to hold Alt and reset my presence and make sure my tone is also reset as well. And then let's go on to the next panel.